Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with what I thought was going to be a lost episode of my golf vlog series. If you guys could do me a favor and drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated. Once I hit 110,000 subscribers, I'll be dropping another special 18 hole video, so stay tuned for that. This is the back nine at Tobacco Road from all the way back in August, and as I'm sure some of you guys can recall, I put up the front nine and never put out the back nine. Basically what happened was this round I played actually on my way to a long drive event and it was actually at my coach's grid and so the SD card that this footage was on, I edited the front nine, put it out and had to take the SD card out so that I re could record the long drive event um, on a different uh, memory card. And so when I put the SD card down on the table, my workspace kind of got messed up a little bit. A lot of other guys started coming into the shop and getting ready for the event and it kind of got lost, and um, I basically for a long time thought that this was just not going to be an episode I was going to be able to put out, and it definitely annoyed me. I've looked for it for a while, and I've been, I spent about an hour looking around a couple days ago and um, found a memory chip that I hadn't really seen for a while, and I didn't really know why I was down there. It was kind of just a stray memory chip down the bottom of this little bag I brought back from North Carolina and um, put it in my camera, and lo and behold, there was the footage, so... Super happy to be able to give you guys this footage. I played really well, and I think you guys will enjoy it. So, made a par there in 10 after a really sticky situation there. And this is a hole I was really looking forward to playing. I have played this course before, and you can bite off a huge part of this fairway. And that's just what I did. Absolutely killed this drive. Got a little help from the wind. You can see my ball all the way up there. Got right on the edge of that. Um, you can see it in the corner of the camera there. Right on the edge of that uh, fairway. Bit off about as much of that as I possibly could have bit off. And, um, yeah, that was I was pretty excited. You can see where the tee box is. <laughs> so that's a long way. It's probably about 370 to carry on that line. And, yeah, I had nothing left. I had uh, 113 yards left, just a little flip wedge. And really was in position to take advantage of this hole. And you can see I'm taking some extra practice swings. You know, I was, this was back when I was really trying to get my wedges more dialed in and uh, made a really good swing at it. This was right at it. I remember this being an absolutely perfect shot, and uh, I was pretty pumped about it. And I almost made this. This was almost a two. Look how close that was. And you'll see here in a bit where the ball landed. So there's the pitch mark right there, and it got some backspin. And about a foot or two to the right, that could have been a two. That would have been a nice way to start the uh, round off. So I will knock that one in to get me back to even par in the round. 200 for the side. And uh, now in hole 12. 419 yards, 4 iron. And I also was playing a lot more conservative, I think, at this time of the year. I was definitely not as dialed in with my driver as I am now. And so you can probably tell how I ref that reflects on my play. Just with how I'm hitting shots off the tee. Leaked this 4 iron out a little bit to the right. And by the way, I really do miss summer, guys. I don't know about you, but um, drop a like on the video if you guys are excited for summer golf to come around. That's something I've definitely been looking forward to a lot this uh, these last month or two. So now 206 yards left, 8 iron. Just trying to put the ball back in my stance, lean back a bit. That's something I've always used to pick it clean out of the fairway bunker. And uh, I found it's really helped out the low point of my... Um, of my ball, I'm sorry, of my shot, which is everything when it comes to picking the ball out of the sand. Let this one a little bit to the right, put it in a pretty tough spot. Had the right distance though, so I'm gonna have a really tough chip shot here from uh, pretty much under the pin here. And uh, if the cam couple camera angles are weird, just know it's because that Tobacco Road's a very, very hilly um, course to say the least. So sometimes I was in a position where I really couldn't get the camera to stand up anywhere near the filming zone I wanted to be in. And you can tell here I was struggling <laughs> with my putting, um, especially with giving up shots after I make a bird or an eagle, and that's just what I did there. So I think I was really annoyed at that. I believe it was because I had the read and I just pulled it. So if you guys do remember, I, I mean, I still have issues with it from time to time, but I like to think I've resolved most of them now. But I used to pull a lot of putts, um, still do from time to time. And that was definitely something I was dealing with a lot um, at this point in time. But yeah, this is a really fun course to play. Brought back a lot of nice memories because uh, every uh, every spring break, my high school golf team would come down here to Pinehurst and uh, for a team trip, and we'd always stop at Tobacco Road on the way. So a lot of good memories here. 
And uh, so you can see, this is a really funky little hole. Probably one of the more famous holes in, in the country. Um, if there is any hole that's talked about Tobacco Road, I, I, I would say it's probably this one, especially the green. So a little 7-iron here from 225. Once again, hanging back on it, making putting it back in my stance. Hit this right at it. Blood just a little bit to the right. And um, I got very, very lucky here. You can see where the ball ended up. <laughs> and I'm about 20. I mean, just gives you an idea of how funky this green is. It's uh, I got very, very fortunate with um, kind of uh, how everything was sitting. And so picked it off pretty clean there. And very narrowly avoided rolling into that little um, splash out. There was someone else who splashed out there. It must have been a couple of days before. But that would have sucked. Um, just very lucky it rolled all the way back down. And um, had a nice little putt at it to, to make birdie. And uh, snapped a bit to the right. And so I've been playing pretty well up to this point. Just miss making, not making many opportunities. Not converting on much. But now in hole 14, probably the highest point on the course. 190 yards away with a 9 iron. Very, very tough par 3. You guys can see water all up on the right, so very good idea to play the left center here and really just make sure that it doesn't leak out to the right. And here, pulled it a little bit, but that definitely is the miss on this hole. Really, probably one of the harder holes on the course. If not, in my opinion, this I could I could say uh, with pretty good confidence, this is probably the hardest hole on the course for, for a lot of people. And uh, so I got a pretty tough shot here, a little splash out at the bunker, and... Uh, Hit a pretty good shot here. Misjudged it a little bit in terms of uh, how it was going to roll once it got on the green. But have about a 5-6 footer to save par here. And stay at 1 over on the round. 1 under on the side. And really great putt. Probably my best putt of the day. And uh, so I saved par there. Really nice 3. Now in hole 15. Par 4. Hitting a 4 iron here. Just trying to put it in play. And this is really, of course, you really can't be that aggressive because... Y you really have to be able to uh, know how to play this course. This is probably, I would say, I mean, and I think everyone can agree that once you have a round or two under your belt on a golf course, your scores will start to get lower just because you can manage your game better. I would say this course is on the extreme end of that. I think if you put someone on this course who's got five or six rounds under their belt, like I do, versus someone on this course who's never played and doesn't have a yardage book, you're talking an easy five or six shots of, of uh, difference just in a vacuum with that kind of information on how to play the course. So if you're ever going to play here, make sure you get a yardage book. It's a ton of fun, but you do need to know the places to miss and the places to lay back off the tee or else this course will beat you up. So I have my birdie putt here. Didn't quite break in enough. Not a bad putt. So settled for par. And uh, now we're on to... Well, 16, one over, only 326 yards here. And you can see I'm only hitting a six iron. And, um, you know, I would love to be more aggressive, but, you know, th this course just calls for putting the ball in certain spots and really playing target golf. So a pretty good shot here. Nothing too crazy, just a little tight draw and uh, put it in the fairway. Just trying to play with some discipline. And you can see we're balling it up there. Pretty much perfect shot there. Stayed right at the bunkers and... Again, another example of where I literally couldn't put the camera anywhere. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy these angles. I might include more of these angles in some of my other videos. And uh, this is another really good shot. Threw this back over the pin. I was actually a little nervous this would spin back off the green because there was a bit of a false front. But I was able to manage the spin pretty nicely and uh, put it to about, about 12 feet, 10 feet. And really nasty lip out there. That would have been nice to get that one, so... Bit of a disappointing par there, and uh, moving on to hole 17. And uh, this is one of the more beautiful holes on the course, I think. It's kind of tough to see, but it's got a tremendous drop-off. As you can see, 140 yards and only hitting a 54-degree wedge. And uh, so it's definitely one of the more fun holes to play. You really get to see the ball in the air for a long period of time. And this is another really great shot. I was really striking the ball well, which is, again, why I was really annoyed that I lost this video. I really wanted to find it for you guys so i'm just really happy i was able to find it and put it together and happy you guys get to see it and uh, you can see the ball there just a little bit past the pin on the right and uh so now i've a really makeable birdie putt about six to eight feet here probably about six seven feet so if i can just make a stroke here this ball should go in that's what i did so 
that definitely felt pretty good. Gets even par on the day, two under on the side. And now 18, par four, 432 yards, and one of the few holes I could be a little more aggressive with. And uh, it is crazy to see how much differently I swing the driver now. Back in August, I was swinging it on a more flat plane, and I really wasn't hitting it as good. Now I swing a little more out to in and uh, play a bit of a cut. So it's crazy. I played a completely different shot shape now versus, um, you know, when this video was being being uh, shot. So really good shot here. 95 yards left, dead center of the fairway. He's going to flip a wedge in there, try to finish this round off under par. And uh, not the best direction here, if I, as, as I recall. I think I pulled this one a little bit. And, uh, yeah, you can see good distance, but um, very funky green. And uh, so we've got about 30 feet left here. The green is about 50, 50 to 60 yards long, by the way, in depth. So it makes this really tough. Um, so gave it a run at birdie. Slipped by on the right side a little bit. So... I'll end up uh, knocking that one in to save my par. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm really glad I was able to find it for you guys. That will be a 71, 37 on the front, 34 on the back. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys next time.